Well, I've been here nearly, well, almost 40, well, I've actually been here 40 years. But I opened about 39 and a half years ago. And I spent, because the place wasn't a barber shop, I made it what it is. So we had to, you know, do everything. You know. And I turned it from a knitwear shop into a barber shop. So that took a, a while. And then I always wanted this shop for years and years and years before that. And uh, <clears throat> it was original. well, when I was first in the area, it was a toy shop. But the difference is with everywhere else, because when I started out, there wasn't anywhere like this. It, it, they're all modern at the time. So they're either a um, sort of 60s look, yeah. tour mica, all that sort of stuff, um, or just a modern version of whatever. Um, this is my life, this is my passion. You know, I never stop buying stuff. My wife, it goes potty. I've just bought, um, I don't know, I don't actually know how many mugs. I've got 50 shaving mugs on the way and I've got another, probably another 150 coming. So, uh, <laughs> I haven't shipped over from the States, it's just, um, <laughs> where are you going to put them? Well, I, I know where I'm going to put them. <laughs> but but I, love, I, I love the whole thing, it's not an act, it's not for business, it's not for money. My house is even worse. I'm actually doing much different. I mean, I'm doing the same thing as I've always done. Yeah. And I was trained to cut hair, you know, in a certain way, which I believe in. Um, and there's always going to be people thinking the more modern way of things. And the modern way now seems to be a lack of, um, how can I be polite? <laughs> Uh, uh, how they do things and it's all down to quick so you get people in and out as quick as possible nice. um, and they don't seem to have any training I mean I'm sure they have training but yeah. it's completely different to what it's all about around the clippers where you stick a thing on the end zoop, yeah. you have a number what's it at the side and back a number what's it on the top mm. and off they go in 10 minutes you know I don't want to do that there's not a lot of skill and craft in picking up a pair of clippers, put a thing on the end and just... Anyone, literally anyone could do that. Mm -hmm. Some will do it better than others, you know. Um, I mean, if they have a number one all over, if that's what they want, like a skinhead haircut, well then, there's no point in doing anything else, probably. Just get a pair of clippers and go and put a number one and go all over. Well, you know. The problem with that, all these things, uh, even with short haircuts, is that everyone has a, you know, a shape to their head. And yeah. everybody, like Andy, has got sort of dips and bumps. Same, you know, we all have, you know. And that's nice if you've got a nice round head and all no bumps and lumps. But if you have, as the most of us have, then your clippers rest on your head and, get, you know, get the lumps and bumps with it. So, in effect, you look at the side of the head and it'll sort of be doing this, you know. Whereas when I do it with the scissors, mm -hmm. the bits in the dips are longer than the bits that are higher. So, mm -hmm. so that although there's a dip there, you wouldn't know it because it's all uniform, it looks mm -hmm. right. You know? Um, you know, we get people, you know, coming for jobs and things, and I've, you know, when, I never employ anybody yet without having an interview and doing, having to do people's hair. Yeah. And not just one person, it's several people. So I can get an idea of what they can do. And sometimes, as soon as they pick up a pair of clippers, I think, well, that's the end of you then. <laughs> <laughs> And has your, has your craft changed much with the sort of changing styles and, and the changing... It's all basically the same, yeah. really. Um, you know, I can do the Mohicans and all that. I don't do, like, cutting shapes and I can't be bothered with all that. It takes far too long, I, you know, and I leave it to the people who are good at it. So, you know, there are people who are very, very, very good at that sort of thing. Great. So let them get on with it. I don't want to do that sort of thing. Um, I like to do proper haircuts and I like, you know, that, well, they can be as short as you like. I don't mind shaving bits, cutting partings in, all that sort of stuff. Well, I hope you're only feeling that hair good. is yeah. a completely different <laughs> yeah, way of cutting hair. I mean, I get black guys coming here and, it, it, you know, you can't just pick a pair of some stuff. It just doesn't work. But if you know what you're doing, it's not difficult. It's, 
it takes me longer that they would do it much quicker than I can because they're doing it all the time. But so it takes me longer, and also I'm very fussy. It has to be right, so I'll keep doing it and doing it and doing it. Um, but, um, if I did it more regularly, of course it'd be quicker. But no, if it's done properly, it's, it's like anywhere else, isn't it? And I always felt, and that was going unisex, everyone was going to the unisex. And I always believed that men and women prefer to be separate, the bottom line. I mean, you'll always get the guys who want to go in with women and chat and give them all their old crap, you know. But of course, you know, it is crap. You know, most of them are probably married or their salesmen think they know it all, you know, hello darling, you know, that sort of thing. And they're probably going, yeah, 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 and then going <laughs> behind them, you know, when they're gone. Um, but mo most, most guys and most ladies prefer to be separate, I think. I strongly believe that the majority of guys would prefer this. Um, and I was packed the first day, so I think, well, something's got to be right. <laughs> uh, you know, the chat, atmosphere, the place, for a certain ambience, um, you know, sort of thing. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people who would never dream of coming here because it's a world fashioned and horrible. And other people think, oh, this is fantastic. You know, like it used to be years ago and all that. So, um, I mean, my customers are more like friends than customers. You know, all the people we socialise with are all customers. Almost without any exception. Um, it's not compulsory as Andy knows, but, you know, um, it works for us. It's, it's great. It's a social life I get paid for. That's how I look at it. Well, that's how I learned it. That's what I used to do when I was with my dad. We used to go to the barbers. Um, and we get people coming now. And that's when Kath and I feel really old because you get three generations. You know, the kid came in, sat on the little board, and now he's bringing his kids in, you know, and his dad came in. Oh, Christ. So, yeah, something must have been keeping me coming back. And I'm, you know, and part of it is that coming here is time out it's kind of a little bit self-indulgent um I, it's so long since i've been anywhere else that i don't know whether i'm paying more for the privilege or paying what i might elsewhere but it's not it's not the point you come here you get um, half an hour of really you know mostly time to yourself a bit of chat with phil we can talk about the stuff that we both enjoy. Yeah, common interests. You kind of don't really think about getting your hair cut as being something which is necessarily enjoyable, but actually it's just that you're letting yourself be a little bit self-indulgent um, in a world where you don't often get that opportunity. So mm -hmm. these days, you know, if you, walk, if you stood here and looked out the window, you know, virtually everybody's going past, they've either got earphones on or they've got their phone. You know, it's just nice to just have a bit of peace of quiet and talk to people, you know. When I first came here, there was about six hairdressers in the area, in about a mile radius. So not very many. Um, most of those were ladies. Um, so, um, and they were all sort of fairly modern at the time, not now, but the, you know, modern day time. And now, instead of the six barber shops, there's at least six, 60 hairdressers in the area now in the same mile radius, mm -hmm. at least, I would think. So, you know, there's enough people in the world for everybody to be busy. I don't wish any competitors, I don't look at them as particularly competitors. You know, there are people doing the same job as I am. And, you know, there's enough people around and they do a good job, well, good luck to them, you know. Um, I never phone another barbers and find out how much they charge and how busy they are. Or, mm -hmm. I couldn't care less. I, as long as I'm busy, I'm happy. But they do phone up, we get them all the time, asking all sorts of silly questions. And when you say, oh, where do you work then? They go, uh, um, uh, uh, sort of little clusters that you've sussed them out. You can hear the hair dryers going in the background, which is pretty quite funny. I don't want to do just young people. I don't want to do just old people. You know, last night on the way home, I went around and did an old boy who used to come in here, but he can't come now because he can't walk properly. And I said, look, you're struggling to get in and out the door. Stay at home, I'll come round after work one night. And I don't go around every bloody week, I only go around, I don't know, once every six, eight weeks. 
you know, and he's just a lovely chap, and his wife's lovely. 